Welcome to my new apartment. I'm so sorry, it's so barren. I'm filming my study abroad Q&A. Shout out my I Love Paris shirt. If you couldn't tell, that's where I went abroad. The question that I got the most was about going abroad not knowing anyone or not speaking the language. I went abroad with NYU. I went to their Paris campus and luckily I knew a good amount of people like one of my closest friends went with me i also met a lot of people through my school it's always going to be scary when you're like thrown into an unfamiliar environment like you're literally in a brand new country so like being scared and nervous and like just overall intimidated is such a normal feeling to have if you think about the fact that like everyone else in your program is most likely going through the same exact thing not even most likely they are Everyone is on the same boat. I think everyone on your like campus or like your program is gonna be very receptive to like making new friends and like meeting people. Honestly, wouldn't say that I met a lot of locals like throughout the entire experience of it. I don't know if this is just like a France thing because like the French don't really fuck with Americans, but I did find it like super difficult to interact with the locals also because of the language barrier. Yes, people speak English, but they prefer not to. The only local I met was when my school matched me with a French student who was trying to learn English and I was an English student trying to learn French. And every week or so I would get coffee with this girl and we'd hang out for like an hour and like talk in English and French. We live in such a digital age that like social media is gonna be your best friend. There's gonna be a lot of people that do like pop up on your explore page just because the algorithm like picks up on the fact that you're like in this foreign country and DMing people, being like, hey, like wanna grab coffee, like nothing serious. And, like if it doesn't work out, who cares? Like you never have to see them again. You're literally in this foreign country. It's not gonna matter. If there was anything that was like embarrassing that just like made you like shiver from cringing, I always was like, you know what? Like I'm literally gonna leave here in a couple months and I'm never gonna see these people ever again in my entire life. This is literally not even reality because these people aren't real. Even though, yes, they're real, but they're not real to you. Talk to the people in your classes. Overall, don't be afraid to put yourself out there. I know it's such like a cliche piece of advice, but it's like the only thing that's actually gonna make you friends. Did I ever feel homesick? If so, how did I manage it? I'm gonna be so real with you. The first like three weeks, you're gonna be like, what am I doing? You may even like regret that you're there. You may wanna go back home and you're just gonna like miss everything that you're used to. And it is so normal to feel that way. And I really encourage you to like, push through that feeling and like not give into it. Literally as soon as those three weeks are over, you're like, wait, I love it here. And then you're never gonna wanna go back home. I think the first three weeks I was definitely going through it. You know, you're in a new country. You're gonna think about back home where everything was so much easier. You had a routine, you had your friends, like every aspect of your life was figured out and which is like so easy and now you're like thrown into this like new environment you're like what the hell am i doing here like i should have never come i want to go back home yeah like i think every single person had that thought for like the first three weeks like all of my friends did how i managed it was talking to my friends about it talking to the people who are literally going through the same thing journaling obviously was like a big thing like i journaled a lot and then I also like relied on my therapist a lot. Um, I think like the first two weeks I had, normally we had like weekly sessions, um, like once a week. But I think the first two, three weeks, I think I had two sessions with her every week just to manage like all this anxiety that I was feeling. My mental health got so much better while I was studying abroad that by like November, I finished therapy. Like I fully finished therapy. My therapist was like, okay, like you're good. like. <laughs> you're good <laughs> and it was such like an emotional peak for me because i had been in therapy for a year having like your therapist tell you like you no longer need to like do this is like very fulfilling and like you know i felt super like accomplished and just overall happy about it i also got this question a lot is it doable to move to paris with minimal french Yes, obviously it's doable because everyone fucking speaks English even though they don't want to. They can, they know what you're saying. We're also not like in the stone age, like Google Translate is a thing. They even have apps where you can like record someone's voice and it like automatically translates it for you. Like there are ways to go about the language barrier. I'm not saying it's easy and I'm not saying it's not frustrating because it was truly so frustrating, especially when I had to like 
go to doctor's appointments. It's very doable because a few of my friends spoke no French, like no French knowledge whatsoever. And they were able to like go about their lives. If you learn just how to ask like the really basic questions of like, can I get this? Or like, do you have this? you're good like you only need to memorize a few phrases to get by there were times where i cried because it was so frustrating and like no one could understand what i was trying to say but it isn't impossible like that shouldn't be what's holding you back from studying abroad how did i budget while i was studying abroad so my best friend and i we actually cooked a lot we lived in the dorms and we had like these communal kitchens and once a week we would go grocery shopping and make food at home. At least like one or two meals we would make at home. We felt a little bit better about it because we weren't eating out for every single meal. Also like the French bakeries really came in clutch because here like in New York, if you want to like go out to eat breakfast, if you got like a breakfast sandwich and like a drink, you'd be paying like 20, $25, which is like ridiculous. There, we would get like a whole baguette, like those big baguettes. We would get like an orange juice and then like even a little dessert and it would come out to like 11 or 12 euros. So I just think overall Paris is like significantly cheaper than New York, even though both cities are still expensive. When it came to like going on trips and stuff, we tried to book them in advance as we could. Although it's obviously difficult because you don't know what your like school schedule is going to be like, weather, stuff goes wrong. So... Sometimes it's like hard to plan a trip in advance. Whatever website you're using to book your flights, try to like look up articles to see if like if they have those deal days because they do come in clutch. I'm not gonna lie, it's like an expensive experience, but I definitely do think if you're able to, it's an opportunity that you should take because it truly was one of the like the best times of my life. And like not to be that study abroad girl, but like I will be that study abroad girl because there's a reason why we exist because it actually is such a great time. Like there are days where I wake up and I'm like, damn, I wish I was in Paris and Paris isn't going anywhere, but I do miss those four months a lot. I got asked my like worst experience or like the hardest part of studying abroad and it was going to the doctors. For some reason, I had a lot of health issues while I was in Paris. Like I kept having like down there problems i had like a foot problem and i was like getting sick and stuff and going to the doctors was so i don't know why the doctors barely spoke english and so i remember there was this time actually there were two different times where i had a uti and i went and she didn't speak english so i was like translating my symptoms like literally typing this out on Google Translate and like showing the phone to her and then like her reading it and like responding to me and like she would respond to me in French like she would speak back to me in French and I'm like no 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 like you need to you need to use the phone like because if I like mishear or misinterpret what you're saying like there's gonna be health consequences so please like let's get this right and I would be like no like the phone and she would like take so long to type and a lot of the times I had to speak to the pharmacists about it. The pharmacists are always nicer than the doctors. Health was the hardest part, but but I will say their healthcare system is so much cheaper. And even though I had like my school's insurance, I would like look at the prices of what it would be if I didn't and it was so inexpensive compared to America that I was like, damn. I mean, good thing I'm getting sick in a country where the healthcare is significantly more affordable. The opposite of that question, what was my highlight, my roses? I think I'd say the traveling. Being in Europe, you're so close to so many like amazing countries and cities and being able to just like book a flight and be in this beautiful new place is so, so valuable oh another budgeting hack sometimes the trains are cheaper than the flight so if you're able to take the train take the train i went to a new country at least once a month most months i went away twice we went to budapest vienna copenhagen amsterdam we also went to saint malo which is like this little town in france and it was really cute and i just like made some of the best memories of my life also just ate the best food like Budapest's food, also same with Vienna's. It was incredible. I wouldn't say France had the best food. I just am not a huge 
French cuisine type of gal. There were restaurants in Paris that didn't serve French food that were really good. Especially this um, hand roll bar called Doki Doki. So good. How much do you think your French improved? What a great question. A thousand percent it did. Like, there's no doubt. I got so much more comfortable and confident speaking in French because you, you kind of just had to. Like, I was forced to speak French. I was like able to form sentences that I didn't even think that I could, um, but I spoke to Uber drivers a lot. Like, they're gonna be your best friends. They're gonna be the best people that you can practice with because most of the time they're also immigrants. They're very receptive to non-native speakers. So I would speak to them every single time. And I had about like a 25 minute drive from my dorm to the city. And like at night when I wouldn't take the train, I would call a car and I would speak to my Uber drivers. And there was this one time where I literally had like a 35 minute conversation with this Uber driver in French. And we spoke about like sports, politics. Like he knew I was a student and that I was trying to like learn French. So he kind of asked me questions that like I would know how to answer. I was so impressed with myself because when I got out of the car, I was like, I didn't even know I could do that. How is your life compared to America? I fucking loved the European lifestyle. They just know what they're doing over there. They really live to live. They don't live to work. And you feel that when you're in the city. Paris is also a very metropolitan like city. It's nothing like America because here you like almost feel the consumerism and like the consumption like you just feel it everywhere and then when you're there it's kind of like everyone's relaxing like even in the way they go about their lives yes people walk fast but it's like not at the same uh, aggression it's not the same attitude you can see how much they value like quality time and, like quality life you definitely get used to like that the enjoying life mindset they're really big chillers and if you're a chiller you'll love it there i got questions about my course load and just how it was going to school and like balancing traveling and like exploring the city and school and like work. I genuinely do feel like almost all schools study abroad programs are easier than their like at home ones. At least like for NYU, that was very much the case. And like I had friends going to UCLA and they felt the same way. I don't know if this is like great advice <laughs> because it's like a once in a lifetime opportunity. Not that I want to encourage you to like sacrifice your grades but maybe not make it like your first priority just because these are moments that you're never gonna get back again. Sometimes you just kind of have to make that sacrifice. Your professors know that you're studying abroad. Your professors know that you're gonna be traveling on the weekends. So I think like when it comes to missing assignments or like submitting late work, they might be a little more understanding on that. I just feel like sometimes grades aren't the most important thing in the world. And you know, four years from now, you're gonna look back and be like, damn, I really didn't need to be stressing over like this final exam that much because in hindsight, it doesn't really matter that much. But again, I'm not saying go flunk your classes, like <laughs> do what you're comfortable with. Dating, let me talk about dating. I know I filmed a few like dating vlogs and stuff. I had a little French boo. I had a little thing, study abroad fling, and it honestly made the experience so fun. So definitely go on those dating apps. Like I'm not even kidding. Just. Just do it for the plot. You need to do it for the plot. It is a lot more, I would say, serious. It's not so much like hookup culture as it is in the States. You go on dates and like you go to dinner. It's not just like a 3 a.m. booty call type vibe. But yeah, I prefer the European dating scene um, over the US one, like a thousand percent. I should have answered this question in the beginning because what to pack. I wish someone, and someone did. My sister literally did this to me and I didn't listen to her, but now that I've experienced it, go with literally one suitcase of items. Or like go with two suitcases, but only fill up one of them and then make sure that the second suitcase is empty. You're gonna wanna go shopping. And I don't care if you're like, no, I'm not gonna go shopping. You are gonna go shopping because trust me, the thrifting is so much nicer in Europe so if you're like a thrifter, you're 100% gonna go shopping. And when you leave study abroad, you are going to be in such pain from having to pack all these new things that you got into these overflowing suitcases. So don't be like me and leave the country with like four overweight mega suitcases because it's such a bitch. Like it's actually, it was so painful going to the airport. Ask yourself, have I worn this piece of item in the last two months? And if the answer is no, you're not gonna bring it. 
Like, don't bring it. To wrap this up, how do you feel about coming back? The last two weeks, when it started hitting me that I was leaving and I was just going back home, I was so sad. I think I cried almost every day for like a week. I was just genuinely so upset to leave Paris because I felt like I just started to get like comfortable and that I was like finally like fully adjusted and right when that happened it was like okay time to go and it was really devastating but yeah I think I like journaled a lot especially like my flight back from Paris like that was super emotional I was like bawling on this flight like just writing in my journal and just like letting everything out actually my friend told me she was telling me to find gratitude in the sadness of leaving study abroad because if I didn't have such a great time, I wouldn't have been sad. So it was kind of like wholesome. And we saw this word on TikTok and we just kept saying it over and over again. It's enowment. I don't even know if that's how you pronounce it. The bittersweet realization of a chapter of your life coming to an end. And so every time we would be sad, we would just look at each other and like say that word. And we, it like instantly made us laugh because we both knew exactly how we were feeling. Our makeup is done. Thank you for listening to me ramble on about study abroad and letting me be that study abroad girl. I love Paris. And my move-in vlog is gonna come very soon. Don't you worry, I filmed it all.